Welcome to a very merry Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, you're here. I'm back. There, there was a spooky ghost for like three weeks and it frightened me. Yeah, I was pretty frightened when I got back. It was kind of off camera, but I had to do an exercise. Let me... The Pilates? <laughs> let, me t- let me tell you. I, I did I did spooky Pilates. Spooky Pilates, yeah. And uh, it was kind of a competition between me and uh, Spooky Michael. Yep. I lost. But I wore out the ghost, so it, it totally evaporated. We're, we're all safe now. I think so. I, I don't think it'll be back till like next year. That's what w- sure. Which is like two weeks from now. <laughs> oh, but I'll still be here, so... <laughs> Don't, it, don't you worry. For sure. And, uh, well, what's going on in the world of television and movies and all that fun stuff? Well, you know what? Christmas is basically here. And, you, you know, your Christmas wouldn't be complete if you didn't watch a Charlie Brown's Christmas special. I'm talking about the original. Uh, you know, the original actually has, has 93% on Rotten Tomatoes and 83 out of 10. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> you know, the the original Charlie Brown Christmas actually has an 83 on Rotten Tomatoes and an 8.3 on IMDb. And uh, I don't know a single person who didn't grow up watching Charlie Brown Christmas. What it Christmas. amazes me is there are like 17% of people who don't like the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Right? Is that even... There's got to be something wrong with that. Like, there's no way somebody actually watched the Christmas special and thought to themselves, you know what? That sucked. (laughs) I just, I can't visualize it. I mean, maybe the only circumstance in which I can imagine that is you've got to, you got to be super rich and maybe the Christmas specials you're used to are live plays or like live renditions of like, like the, what do you, what was that movie with the three ghosts? <laughs> Christmas Carol. Yeah, Christmas Carol. Yeah. Could you imagine that, watching a live play of Christmas Carol? Having a heart of coal. I think you have to not watch the, uh, not like the the Charlie Brown Christmas tree special. Agreed. Agreed. But you know what? There's uh, a few films that are a little bit easier to understand why people don't necessarily like them. Okay. Uh, I personally like the movie Elf. Uh, of course, I was uh, pretty young when I when I first watched it. But not everybody is a Will Ferrell fan, which, I mean, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Here's what's amazing. The guy who directed that is now directing like a bunch of Star Wars stuff. He's, he directed the uh, recent season of The Mandalorian. Really? John Favreau was the guy who directed Elf. Wow. And he also did, of course, a whole bunch of Marvel movies, like the Iron Man movies. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. How how was the latest Mandalorian? To it, sidetrack. It was it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people kind of uh, iffy about how it ended. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as one of our our camera people, uh, is not quite uh, happy in how things wrapped up. But there were some. Uh, yeah, if you're a Star Wars fan, there was some very interesting developments in the final episode of the final of the last season. So. Yeah, but back to Elf. Um, you know, it got a 7 out of 10 on IMDb and an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, I mean, it couldn't be too bad. And it really, you know, it, I don't know if you remember this, but it actually has Zoe Deschanel. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite Zoe Deschanel movie? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> My favorite would be Yes Men. But um, that's probably a cop out. You know what was even worse than Elf, though? Elf Bowling? <laughs> Maybe, but I can guarantee you that Home Alone 3 was worse. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, basically everything past Home Alone 2, I consider, like, non-canon in the, <laughs> the Home Alone expanded universe. Yeah. Because there, there's, like, five or six of them now. It's I, really tragic. Yeah. Like, the, the first two count, everything past that, no. I think Macaulay Culkin should do another one. <laughs> I, I would love to see it. Right? I would love to see it. I'll pay for that. Macaulay, if if you don't have one in the next five years, one small tear from this boy. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. You, you know, him as an older man in a house alone, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe on Christmas. Yeah. You know, you, you could redeem it. 
I know, yeah, uh, <laughs> Home Alone 3 got a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, which, personally, I don't think is low enough. I think, you know, did you know in Home Alone 2 there was a cameo of, uh, what's his name, Donald Trump? Yeah. Kind of strange. He's always kind of been in the media. There, he's, like, if you watch, like, anything from the 90s, he shows up in the weirdest places. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he cameoed on The Fresh Prince once. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, how... How? Yeah. Money. <laughs> that's that's basically it. Uh, yeah, so basically avoid Home Alone 3. It doesn't have Macaulay Culkin, and uh, yeah, you, you'll, you'll be sad. Yeah, there's no Joe Pesci either. True. True. It, it, you know, I think it had sequelitis. Well, that's what happened. I think so. Um, most, most things get sequelitis eventually, though. You can't just keep on. You just can't do it. Not forever. Except for Fast and Furious, which people still seem to want. I don't. I don't get that. <laughs> I've seen the first two, and that was that was it. That's all you need to watch. Oh, Cars remember? go fast, things go boom. It, you know what's bad when in I think it was like Fast and Furious four or five. Um, instead of actually winning races, what they did is they're like, "Hey, we got to go win some races to make some money." So they just had a montage because you, you know you know what's going to happen. Yep. So it's like, why well, even watch the movie to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> um Ooh, yes. Getting my cards out of order. The Santa Claus 3. Did you watch that one? I have. I have very vague memories of it. Uh You know why it's vague? Cuz it got only 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember it being that hot. <laughs> well, you know why? Because Tim Allen was uh going up against Jack Frost. So that made for uh uh, was cult. that Martin Short? I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> and there was like a creepy like robotic Santa or something like that that was plasticky. It was yeah. very strange. That's yeah. all I remember about and it. And it had Red Bull product placement of old things. Well, that's what you think of when you think Christmas, right? Oh, yeah. Get to have wings and yep. get cranked. That's another great example of sequelitis. Um, the first, you know, the first Santa Claus was good. You know, Tim Allen was, uh, you know, a dad who had just happened to be Santa Claus. I yeah, mean... he just, like, murders Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. And becomes Santa Claus, like, uh, because of the Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, another great example of... It's like a werewolf thing, except, you know, if Tim Allen kills you, he takes you over. He's kind of like a murderous Kirby in, a, in that regard. True. True. Um... Did you ever hear of the Nutcracker in 3D? Uh, I've heard of it, yes. I don't uh, think really? I've seen it. Yeah, I've never really been a whole fan of the whole Nutcracker thing. Oh, me neither. Absolutely not. Um, you know, it, when I was researching for this episode, uh, when, <laughs> there was a review that really stood out to me. It's uh, They called the Nutcracker in 3D a misguided and misconceived on every level movie. And... I got to say, with, with a score of 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, this was the absolutely worst, <laughs> absolutely the worst video or movie I could find for Christmas. So, uh, I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, the Nutcracker in 3D is definitely going to be right up your alley. For everybody else, stay very clear. <laughs> Unless you're Tim Allen, then he can kill the Nutcracker and take him over. True. Y you know what? That's the movie we really need. And Tim Allen is the Nutcracker. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, just a friendly reminder that uh, Holiday isn't great. And it still only has 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> and that's what you get for a Christmas movie that releases, that was released in October. <laughs> that's, yeah. Before Halloween. That's sacrilegious. Not really, not really sacrilege, but um, it just goes against everything I stand for. What gets me about Christmas movies now, like these Hallmark specials, is that like everybody knows the formula for them now. Like big city girl goes back to her hometown and falls in love with a like uh, guy who doesn't like her at first. And they eventually fall in love and she breaks up with her man back in the city. Like that's the entire thing. Yeah. Just in, in, in repeat, but everybody's making like memes and everything about it now because it, it's done so much. Oh, it's done to death. And, and if you didn't know until before now, we just saved you eight hours on Christmas. Yeah. Like uh, I've just described like every holiday movie released by Hallmark in like the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. 
But, you know, it's kind of funny that we mentioned uh, Star Wars during when I was talking about Elf. Because there's a very, very special Christmas special that you should either avoid at all costs for the rest of your life or religiously watch every single year. And that's a very special, Wookiee-speaking, Star Wars Christmas special. Oh, yes, the, the original one. The original one. Yeah, because they're, uh, they have released a Lego one, which I know that the ghost was very upset about because there's now two holiday specials. One's in Lego for, form, so. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, Lego usually does a pretty good job when it comes to the games. Um, they're always so in depth in the original ca uh, canons and lores, and they're really, really accurate. Like the Lego Batman, great example. Um, Lego Star Wars Christmas special, maybe not so great. <laughs> and and same with the original Christmas special. Um, they actually tried to deny its existence at first. Yeah, and it, it existed for years on like pirated tapes that people have like brought like recorded off their screens yeah because it was straight to television right yeah it was like a s surreal fever dream with like b arthur yeah it, it, seriously if you haven't watched it please go watch it uh don't watch it on christmas it'll kind of ruin christmas for you but um believe it or not it didn't get a zero on rotten tomatoes like that nutcracker movie we just talked about it actually got 27 percent. so it's one of those things that it's like watching a train wreck you know it's fascinating on how bad it is yeah and yeah. you can't look away speaking of star wars and christmas did you know that bon jovi's first recorded song was actually merry uh, r2d2 we wish you a merry christmas from christmas up uh, from the stars in 19 I guess it was, yeah, the year that Star Wars came out, which would have been like 77. Excuse yeah, me? that was his first uh, recorded in-studio song was R2-D2, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Bon Jovi. Yeah. What a way to remember you this year. Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah. You learn something new every day. And you know, you know what? I got to say, Bon Jovi, you never let me down. R2-D2. Holy crap. What? Yeah, there was a we, full full album, Christmas from the Stars. Is it rock? Uh, it, it's a holiday album. Wow. Yep. But that's all I got for you, Mike. All right, we'll be back <laughs> right after this, and I'm going to talk about video game news. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us about video game news. Sure thing. And uh, in terms of new releases, some things to talk about. We have uh, When the Past Was Around for Xbox One, PC, PS4, and Switch. It's a point-and-click puzzle game about love, moving on, letting go, and the joy and pain of everything in between. Uh, it's got a really nice, uh, charming, hand-drawn visuals. And it's kind of a short but sweet type game uh, with beautiful music and a memorable story doing 73 on Metacritic. Now, have you ever played Final Fantasy Tactics or Ogre Battle? I, I have played Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay. It's one well, of my favorites. You Did might you be... know that in the original, there was a way to level yourself down? 
<laughs> no, I did not. And but it was it was an exploit because when you leveled yourself down, you kept um, a lot of your stat bonuses. Even though your stats were going down, your bonuses are still there. So that was how you over leveled. Okay. Well, the next two games, uh, if you like fa Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, might be in your wheelhouse then. We have uh, Brigadine, The Legend of Rune Rizza from Matrix Software for PS4 and Switch. It's a follow-up to the 1998 tactical role-playing game. It's a mix-up of uh, grand strategy and turn-based battles. You assume control of one of six different nations and experience a different storyline for each one. There's also a challenge mode and a sandbox mode. This one's doing 66 on Metacritic. Huh. And this one's going to sound familiar because it's pretty much the same type of gameplay. Uh, Mercenaries Blaze, Dawn of the Twin Dragons. Now, this is not the Twin Dragon Encounter movie that was covered by Red Letter Media. <laughs> it's for the Switch. Uh, it's the fifth game in the Mercenaries series. You play through story and side missions where you and your characters uh, participate in turn-based tactical battles again. Uh, select your party leader with each different battle, and each party leader has a different set of bonuses and advantages. This one's doing a le little bit better than the previous one with uh, 70 uh, Metacritic. You know what, though? To dial it back a little bit, I really like the concept of having multiple storylines. For sure. Because that was kind of the bottleneck of their original Final Fantasy Tactics, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, you, you play it once for the story, and then you play it five more times for the gameplay. But it sounds like, you know, by that logic, what was the, what's the game called again? Uh, that one was Brigadine. Brigadine. Yeah. You, you know, that's, it sounds like you've got just about, you know, 40, 40 playthroughs. Yeah, that. you got a few different playthroughs, that's, uh, that's for sure. And then once you're done that, you got the sandbox mode. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Does it have multiplayer? I don't think so. I think it's like a, you know, it's a single player ah. you know, tactical game. Okay. Now, have you ever wanted to live in a city in the sky? Every single day of my life. And build your own city in the sky. Yes. Well, then you probably want to play Airborne Kingdoms for the PC. It's by The Wandering Kingdom. Okay. And yeah, it's a city builder in the sky. Explore the world with it, your grand city as you construct it in the air. Nice. You collect your resources from around the map because your city moves because it's in the sky. Okay, that's cool. And uh, it's more of a relaxed uh, city builder. There, apparently there's like no conflict or anything like that, but there's a story and you get to explore the map and, you know, build up your flying city. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're floating around in the clouds, you don't want conflict like that. Oh, for sure. And uh, 78 on Metacritic for this one. Sim building games have always kind of been up my alley. Did you ever play A-Train for PlayStation 1? No, I haven't. That one was pretty interesting. Um, you, you, uh, it's, uh, you, you had to build the subway basically in Japan. Okay. And um, not as easy as it sounds. No, probably not. Probably not. Uh, next up is, uh, well, it's, it's basically an expansion pack. Uh, Gears 5 Hive Busters. Return to Gears 5 with a Hive Busters expansion and undertake a uh, new series of missions. Basically, if you like Gears of War 5, this one might be for you. 79 on Metacritic. Gears of War is still going, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And wow. uh, yeah, people still like it, I think. I've only played the first few. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of third-person shooters. I yeah. think they're very underrated. I, I think it's it's basically a flagship for the Xbox at this point. So, yeah, it's one of those series that I think we're going to see continue. It's kind of funny. People I people are always like, you know, the characters in Gears of War, they're, they're huge and they're unrealistic. But then you look at the developers, they're also huge yeah, and unrealistic. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a couple uh, side note things, uh, just uh, random news stories. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 released a couple of weeks back now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of been, you know, there's been problems ever since it's been released. And the latest thing now is that if your save file gets too big, over 8 megabytes, the save file will corrupt oh, no. in some cases. So. People uh, not enjoying that so much. The last time I had an 8 megabyte file size limitation, that was for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I guess basically depends on how you do your save data, right? Because some save files are tiny. But yeah, so uh, people have been encountering corrupted save files because their save file goes over 8 megabytes. 
for whatever reason. How does that not? How how does that get through quality control? <laughs> I guess they, were, you know, they were under pressure, and I, I think they had to rush it to get it out before Christmas. And there's been backlash for it. I mean, we say this, but everybody likes Bethesda games. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think after a few months, after they get the bugs kind of ironed out. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those games that has legs. It will just, people will keep buying it and playing it. Yeah. You know, give it a year. Yeah, for it's sure. Not going, it's a multiplayer game, so it's not going anywhere. Uh, is it not multiplayer? I don't think it is. What? Yeah. I've been lied to. <laughs> Who told you that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's multiplayer. I think it's just single player. Okay. Yeah. So that changes the... Now, changes speaking things. of multiplayer, uh, have you ever played Stardew Valley? I've heard of it. It's a fun farming game. Uh, you take over your grandfather's farm and you have to repair it and plant crops and stuff like that. It's a very chill game. You know, it's not very stressful. came out about three or four years ago and uh, the developer, uh, Concerned Ape, who developed this game single-handedly, by the way. He did, like, everything for it. Uh, he's been constantly putting out, like, new patches and stuff. He's been supporting the game, like, ever since it came out. And his latest patch, a 1.5, adds, like, a whole bunch of new characters. There's a new type of farm, a beach farm, wow. that you can uh, build up. And there's uh, new ways to interact with the world and, like, new character interaction. So if you're a fan of Stardew Valley... You probably want to check out the latest patch. All right. You know, if you haven't played it yet, it sounds like right now is the best time to get started. I believe it might be actually on sale right now. So, yeah, it's a, it's a fun game, and I've sunk a few hours into it for sure. Yeah, God bless Steam sales, eh? Oh, yeah. And I wanted to mention yep. that with this latest patch, they now have split-screen co-op. Oh, cool. So he, they have, they, he introduced multiplayer a couple patches back, but now you can do split-screen. So if you have two people in the same house with the same TV... You can play with your, with your friend. Well, it looks like we might have to figure out a Let's Play one these days. There we go. There we go. And that wraps things up for me. Get it wrapped because presents, Christmas. Thank you so much for watching a very merry media minute. I'm Michael Ford. And I'm Jesse Sanford. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.